Good morning once again. This is Jason E. coming live at you for another well special. This is a little bit of a different show. It's a top. It's something I keep hearing about, and I was like, well, I don't know if I want to talk about it, but I think it is important, and it's you know it's a, it's centered on a real you know iconic figure, and there's a lot of interesting I think things connected uh, together, uh, you know, between a few different actors and kind of a period in history so i decided to talk about it so mainly what today uh today's kind of specialty segment is going to be about is is basically talking about the news of the new uh crow movie there's a, a remake coming out this summer starring uh, peter skarsgård who is you know amazing he uh has been in so many great movies the whole family the skarsgårds are just like knocking it out of the park um he was um Skarsgård what played had played Pennywise in the Pet Cemetery I'm uh, not Pet Cemetery the It movies the first one the first It is um just amazing I think it's a masterpiece Peter Skarsgård's role as as Pennywise is jaw dropping just absolutely amazing I think that movie is one of the best horror movies that's come out in you know probably well, last 10 years i don't own that movie i do need to buy it um at some point i've only seen it a couple times but that movie is so good and he is he is so damn frightening in that movie i love the original too with tim curry i mean that's a that's a classic it's a little bit cheesier it maybe doesn't hold up as well but it's it's great it's it's still an awesome movie the second the sequel to to the it i thought was absolutely horrible um, I remember going to see that movie with some friends because we were, were big fans. And I went in particular with my good friend Emmett, who is a huge Stephen King fan. And I, I do like King's work quite a bit. But we were very excited about seeing the new the new It. And it was so, like, ridiculous. Um, really bad writing. It didn't have the, the magic that the first one had. It didn't have the... Um, it just never drew you in. And it got into like this really almost ridiculous uh, territory. And it really fell apart. And that movie was probably, at one point it was, I was really anticipating it, but I was so, so let down. And it was just an example of, I don't know, at the end of the day, a sequel gone bad. You know, they just could not capture the magic. They tried to put too much into the film and it suffered from bad writing, and it just, it didn't have the impact at all. Um, Peter Skarsgård was still great in it, but, you know, it was, it was an, uh, a real missed opportunity. Um, but he's a, an incredible actor. He was also in the last John Wick movie, which is uh, a masterpiece. I think it's just as good as the first one, if not better. I, it's definitely it blows away any of the other films in the john wick franchise which i do love the john wick movies overall uh the first one is just incredible i mean it's it's one of keanu reeves best uh movies and i really love the the the, the last one that came out peter skarsgård was the was the villain in that movie and that movie is a an action masterpiece i think it's easily one of the greatest action movies uh ever done and i think it definitely in recent years it is uh i feel in some ways that movie i feel is like kind of this the ultimate love letter to max action movies you know and that includes like american action movies but then also asian action movies where you have like you know directors like john woo where there's a lot of guns and and action centered around you know uh guns and then the also it's also a, a love letter to the martial arts uh the great martial arts cinema uh of the 70s and 80s it's it's just so amazing it like it is a tribute to all of those kinds of genres or subgenres in the action world but it's a masterpiece and peter skarsgård is just incredible he plays one of the best villains in it uh, that i've seen in recent years and um so you know i heard well, the reason that this, the reason I decided to make this 
video for what it's worth. You know, it, it is what it is. I just, I kept hearing about it. And mainly it's because it, it, I knew, I remember hearing a few months ago that there was going to be a Crow kind of reboot or a remake. And I was like, ah, okay, sure. You know, I wasn't super excited by that prospect. You know, um, I was, I was like, okay. But the main thing that happened was they released <clears throat> the first photo of basically of Peter Skarsgård as the as the crow, and it has it created this like shitstorm uh, controversy left and right. Like literally every day, I see somebody talking about the release photo of Peter Skarsgård as as the as the crow, the new one that's coming out. I think it's coming out. In June or July of this year, um, and and so basically everybody has said that you know the the look of the of of the crow is just uh, like a bad joke. It's horrendous, and and so it made so I kept literally every day I see something about it, and people are making memes out of it, um, you know, and I and I get it. It's like it's it's always been a part you know, a part of the Hollywood kind of movie system where, you know, there has, there's always been kind of remakes of films. There's always been sequels. But I think obviously within the last 10 to 12 years, maybe more, but especially now, there's, you know, an overabundance of remakes and uh, sequels and where so many movies come out, they're always trying, if they have, you know, if the studio has success with that movie, they they try hell or high water to turn it into a franchise and to essentially turn it into this cash cow, you know. And again, that that thing is not necessarily different than, you know, movies that came out in the '70s or you know before. I mean, there's tons of examples of movies that came out that, you know, might have been say in the horror genre or the action genre. Uh, you know, a great example that I can think of right off the top of my head is is the Death Wish movies with Charles Bronson. Classic, classic movies. And they're all just amazing. But they came out, you know, like Charles Charles Bronson starred in all of those movies and the first one came came out and it was a big success. And then they just kind of milked it and made it into this big franchise. And all of the movies are just like ridiculous and amazing. But that was, you know, in the 70s and 80s. So they were always, you know, it's always been a thing. Uh, but I think now there is an overabundance of it, and I think it happens uh, probably too much. And I I don't think it's and I you know, honestly I think it's a it's 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 really a result of just where there it's harder for original projects to get financed. The studios are maybe a little bit more conservative in some ways, you know. But again, it's not any different. But I think it is, and. I feel like the studios now have this sense to a degree of like a higher risk and trying to play things safe maybe. And they're, you know, at, we, we live in an age where there are prequels, there are sequels to films, there are remakes, there are reimaginings. It's, it's a constant. And then so many films now get, get the green light if they have decent or to like moderate success or if they are a blockbuster they automatically seem to be turned into a franchise. So there's definitely an increase in that whole kind of thing, I think, now more than ever. And so, you know, I was like, okay, Peter Skarsgård as The Crow, he's an, ama he's an amazing actor. He can do anything, and that would be cool to see, I think. But I wasn't, like, overly excited. And, of course, The Crow, you know, is a, you know, that, that movie is a masterpiece. Like, it came out, it's hard to believe, it came out, in 94 starring Brandon Lee and I it made me think before I started talking about the movie it made me think of these strange weird parallels between Brandon Lee you know and and I remember going to see that movie and the series of events that happened around that movie and also fast forward many years later with Heath Ledger uh, for The Dark Knight uh, the Batman movie where he plays the Joker. It was that same... There's a, such an eerie cloud, I think, between both of those movies because, you know, you had Brandon Lee who was on pretty much emerging as, 
you know, one of the most popular and one of the most talented directors of his age and of his generation. He had done a, you know, Brandon Lee did a series of movies before. He did a lot of action movies and a few martial arts movies. And he did, also did some dramatic movies dramatic, where he played dramatic roles. And Brandon Lee was, you know, an incredibly talented guy. I think he was not, you know, by any means, like he's looked at and regarded, you know, looking looking back at, the, at, his, at his career, you know, he was not a one-dimensional character. I don't think, you know, he, he could have done... I think he could have done anything. I think he displayed that in some of the movies that he did. Obviously, he was a great, uh, ama- you know, a, a great action star, and of course, son of Bruce Lee, and so he kind of followed in that tradition of what Bruce Lee was all about. He uh, always had an incredible rapport with, you know, people that he worked with. People always gave him so many accolades about being just such a great uh, and humble, and uh, you know creative person and but I think he definitely was more than just an action star I think he you know he showed he wasn't a one-dimensional actor you know and I think the same the same exact thing the eerie thing too with Heath Ledger uh the same kind of trajectory where he you know could you know play anything and he could do comedy he could do action he could do dramas um I mean, you name it. He played so many interesting roles, um, you know, that was where you, you, you know, you couldn't recognize him. Not a one-dimensional actor by any means. But he was pretty much coming into his own when he did The Dark Knight. And I think he was, like, on the verge of being, you know, becoming a rock star, as the same as Brandon Lee. Like, these were going to be like the crow was going to be the role f- um for him to kind of launch him into superstardom and i think the joker was what for the same thing for heath ledger as an actor and you know and that's what happened basically they were immortalized after those roles because they are just you know for for instance for the joker I think, yeah, there's a lot of great renditions of the Joker, you know, around the uh, pretty much my favorite character in the Batman universe, my favorite villain of all time, the best in the whole kind of rogues, you know, galley, gallery um, um, world. Just <coughs> amazing, amazing. And there's been so many great, you know, Jack Nicholson who played the Joker and, and Joaquin Phoenix recently who played the Joker a few years back. There's been some really great... Uh, actors, you know, Jared Leto. Um, but I think at the end of the day, hands down, without a doubt, uh, you know, Heath Ledger's role as the Joker um, pretty much eclipses every one of those other performances. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's his, it was his greatest role. It is the greatest uh, incarnation of that character ever. And Heath Ledger was made to play the, the Joker. It was like the perfect... Uh, this it was an example of the stars aligning, and it was like perfection. And I'd say the same thing for Brandon Lee. Like it, you know, his whole his whole trajectory followed the same trajectory as Heath Ledger. He was doing all of these different kinds of roles, showed lots of diversity, and had this incredible reputation as an actor. Had a lot of depth, but could do all kinds of things. And he. You know, it became a thing of where he was going to take on this iconic um, character, the the crow, and and that movie did the same thing. Like this was kind of the culmination of his talent, and he became a household name from that movie. And the thing that you know, both of those movies had such a weird black cloud around them because, on virtually, you know, right before those two movies came out. Uh, they both died in an incredibly tragic death, you know. Uh, Brandon Lee with, you know, actually accidentally getting killed on the set and then Heath Ledger overdosing. Uh, You know, and this all happened on the eve of the completion of the movie and also the eve of the release of the movie. 
And so it was a really, I remember that. I remember when, like it was yesterday, I remember when The Crow came out and that movie was so anticipated. It looked, I remember when the trailers came out, the whole thing just looked amazing. Like just innovative. It was based on a, on a wonderful comic book character. It was going to be really dark. Uh, just amazing. Unlike anything at that time. And it came out in 94. And and then he dies. Like literally before the movie is completed. They, the filmmakers finish the film and then they put it out. And then the same thing happens to Heath Ledger. And so I remember going to see those movies when they came out and just being completely blown away by how incredible their roles were in the film. But then the films themselves being so uh, amazing, like just incredible. Uh, I don't own The Crow. I have not seen The Crow in such a long time. Um, this, this whole thing about The Crow with you know the new one coming out and all the outrage about the new look of The Crow kind of really got me thinking like I really need to buy this again I or I need to buy it on blu-ray and I need to see it again because I literally can't remember the last time uh, I saw the crow uh, again one of the most iconic movies ever made um, the greatest movie for for Brandon Lee and for Heath Ledger the Joker uh, the Dark Knight the greatest role he's ever played but it had this I remember when those movies came out not I mean on one hand, the films were just magnificent and thrilling in every way. Um, and it cemented them as being iconic actors, you know, that will, will they've cemented kind of their legacy. But then it was like the, the, the black cloud of coming to terms with the tragedy that both of these brilliant actors, brilliant actors died so young and had so much potential. And it was so, it was like, I remember that feeling of going to see both of these movies. And it was the same thing with, with, with The Dark Knight. Um, just, you know, being thrilled and excited to see the movie. But then it was like kind of weird and like uh, very melancholy and kind of sad and tragic to, 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 to kind of almost, almost to where those feelings kind of overshadowed the experience of where, you know, um, I don't know because it was so fresh and it happened so quick and it was they were young and you know just so much potential so I, I remember there always being this weird kind of thing around it and the parallels between those two stories is, is, is wild but um, now like I don't own The Crow um, but I need to get it uh, I really want to get it on Blu-ray I'm going to make that my mix, next mission I've never seen it on Blu-ray, and again, I have not seen it in years, uh, but I remember seeing it a bunch of times when it came out, and I always thought it was an amazing movie. The Dark Knight, I own on Blu-ray, and I've seen that movie, I don't know how many freaking times. And the interesting thing is, like, for for example, with the, with the Dark Knight, I was able, you know, it was weird seeing it for the first time. I remember seeing it in the theater two or three times, and it was just so amazing, and so I was blown away by that movie. But I was, it, again, it came with all of these other emotions where it was like, it was kind of hard to watch. It was kind of tragic, you know. And But it's interesting now that a lot of time has passed. Many, many years have, have passed. And I've watched The Dark Knight many times since then. I have many editions of it. I have a couple of copies of it on DVD. And I have two versions of it on Blu-ray. And now when I watch The Dark Knight, I don't have any of that, I don't know, uh, baggage with me when I watch it. I just totally get into the movie and absorb and just totally get into it and just, you know, fall, um, fall in love with it all over again. I fall in love with it all over again. I don't have any of that sense of tragedy or, or you know, um, you know, just that, that depressing kind of scenario of what happened. Now I just, when I watch it, because all this time has passed, I just really get into the movie and I enjoy it for what it is. Um, so it's interesting how time does affect that. And so that, you know, when I saw those photos of Peter Skarsgård as the new Crow, you know, I again, I had my own reaction up to it, but I was just kind of taken, a, blown away by how many, how many people chimed in. Um, there was even one guy who I know that is trying to start this whole thing of where 
um, this big kind of online protest against the movie because he was so outraged by the photo and the artwork of this film. Because this movie, and without a doubt, The Crow is in it, uh, and a, a masterpiece. It's a it's an iconic movie. But this guy in particular was so outraged by the artwork that he was like trying to start this, or start, he did. He has this online petition trying to like, you know, boycott the studio or whatever, or to, I don't know, calling for, you know, that this movie needs to be, you know, thrown out and they need to redo it again, basically. And it's pretty funny. It's like, on one hand, come on, dude, like, get a fucking grip, you know. Um, it's a movie and I get it, you know. But I have to say, too, my first reaction when I saw the photo of Peter Sarsgaard as as the Joker, um, shit, well, it does remind me of the Joker. In, in particular, Jared Leto's take. Um, but when I first saw the photo of Brandon of of Peter Skarsgård as the Crow, I thought it it does. I, I thought it looked like shit. I thought it looked terrible, and it kind of you know, and it was kind of the thing with what they did with Suicide Suicide Squad with Jared Leto's character um, as the Joker, you know, and where they made him into this kind of like thug gangster kind of a thing. You know, he's got that whole gangster kind of thug aesthetic. Tattoos, and he's all, like, kind of hard, hardcore. And, you know, that being said, I, in a weird way, kind of like his role as the as the Joker. I, I mean, Jared Leto, I think, is an, just an amazing actor. The movie, this, the first Suicide Squad is, like, an atrocious piece of garbage. He is, he's actually pretty good, and I, and I kind of like what they did with the Joker in a way because I mean again you can't it's untouchable the performance of Heath Ledger and you know Jack Nicholson but I like that they decided to do something totally different and you know and he's kind of good in it you know I kind of thought he was he's kind of you know kind of cool not definitely not my favorite incarnation of the Joker but I like that it was so different but anyway, that was when I first saw the photo of Peter Skarsgård. It reminded me so much of that, where they're trying to like make him into this like hardcore gangster guy, and and he looked, you know, he's got tattoos and he's all like kind of ripped, and whereas you know that's not when you look at the um, the original character of the Crow, that is not at all what. Um, You know, none of that is a part of his character. I mean, he's kind of a role of... I, when I think of the Crow, and especially Brandon Lee's portrayal of the Crow, he's like this, you know, kind of classic, heroic uh, hero that is kind of this representation of, like, justice and and kind of liberty. But he is, like, struggling, and he is... He's got a lot of turmoil, but he's very... Uh, he's heroic, but he's incredibly vulnerable. And he is, you know, coming to the terms of his, like, mortality. And so he has this weight to him. He's not, you know, he's not this aggro, tattooed, aggressive, alpha male guy, you know. So I get that. And um, I just feel, I, yeah, I, I do say, I, I will say, I, I agree. I think the, the first look uh, of what, of what they've done around, you know, the the design of the new crow is uh, kind of terrible. So I can understand the outrage, um, you know. So I, I, yeah, I don't. I at this point, I don't have any interest in in seeing it. I probably will see it. The crow films. I mean, that turned into a franchise. The first crow was a massive movie. It was a phenomenon, and they made like three or four movies. Um, after that, I think they made four of the movies, and the second one I remember being somewhat de- decent, kind of decent, I guess at times. But th- for the most part, they're all uh, just god awful movies, and they tried to turn into a franchise. So they made a TV show. They've just like four of the movies that came out, uh, and some of them are just absolutely unwatchable. And so I don't know. It's like it's not. I think The Crow is a movie that 
it's truly it's truly its own standalone film. It's not where it's it shouldn't have been milked and turned into a franchise. I think because it, it it does um, tarnish that you know that legacy of that movie because it's a really you know it's an amazing film and so you know at the end of the day I do agree with people's outrage over the photo and you know but I guess you know it is what it is but the interesting thing for me is that it made me think more about this weird you know um these ear weird and strange parallels between Heath Ledger and Brandon Lee you know kind of off topic but yet related so that's what today's show was about to just kind of talk about those things so anyway Thanks again, and have a great day. Peace.